you'd have to have been living in a cave for the past couple of years not to have heard of Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone or one of the other Harry Potter books or movies. Uh, it is largely because of the efforts of J.K. Rowling, Peter Jackson, and others, uh, the renewed interest in the mainstream in fantasy literature and fantasy art, um, and the classes like this one around the country wouldn't exist without that renewed interest. To begin with, in discussing this movie, I would remind you of some of the things we talked about in regards to uh, children's fantasy earlier in the class, and point out that J.K. Rowling shows a great degree of sophistication in sort of reimagining Harry Potter's situation. It's not unusual for the protagonists of children's fantasy to be sort of waifs, orphans, uh, in some, one way or another alienated from parental figures. After all, uh, the movies and books, the plot wouldn't be very realistic if the protagonist could simply run to a, an authority figure, an adult, to solve their problems. What Rowling is doing in making Harry an orphan and showing that Harry has, doesn't necessarily have the best relationship with adults that his teachers, uh, he doesn't get along with his teachers, that sometimes he's bullied by other students, is showing a, a much more contemporary view of uh, the child's situation. And just as Harry is sometimes overwhelmed by changes, um, so too modern families, children uh, who go through broken homes, um, whose parents divorce, suddenly find themselves overwhelmed by uh, a change in circumstance, just like Harry. As Harry matures through the novels, you see him uh, grow into a number of different situations, um, most notably uh, the sort of change from prepubescent to um, an interest in the opposite sex uh, in the most recent movies, um, that sort of typify the reading audiences uh, kind of experiences themselves. So in the Harry Potter series, you see Rowling showing a great degree of sophistication in anticipating how her reading audience is going to perceive what is happening to Potter. Another level of sophistication in the novels, and uh, much more in the movies, where the visuals of the novels are sort of explored, is the nostalgic feel of the wizard world. You'll notice that the cars, the buildings, the styles of dress, um, all have sort of a, a feel to them which is much older. Okay? And if you look for a dominant time period represented in that look and feel, um, you really are looking at the time when Rowling and other adults with children right now were children themselves. The movie has uh, a very nostalgic feel for, you know, sort of the time when these adults were children themselves, uh, a time when, if you'll pardon the pun, magic was possible. Now, the one thing that Rowling cannot be said to be very sophisticated about, and the movie really highlights this, is the way that the fantasy world is put together. If you look for internal consistency in the Harry Potter books and the Harry Potter movies, you're not going to find it. Rowling is really doing something much more along the lines of taking cliches from fantasy, giants, trolls, uh, mythological figures, potions, wands, and sort of weaving them together in sort of a, a, a fabula um, that isn't necessarily internally consistent. Even other authors who have sort of a wide variety of different sources to inform their fantasy worlds, such as Neil Gaiman, um, have a greater degree of consistency than Rowling creates, but one must also remember that these are not necessarily the concerns of the reading audience that she is writing to. 
Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone as to the the actual premise, the actual plot. Um, the you see Harry going through uh, a lot of the types of circumstances that uh, one would expect to encounter in a child's fantasy. Um, he is told not to do things by adults. Things are not explained to him. As he decides to investigate, he becomes embroiled in a, uh, a larger plot. And eventually, at the climax of the movie, he defeats Voldemort um, and actually accomplishes something very heroic. Um, or, I should say, he plays a role in the, uh, the defeating of Voldemort. Um, largely because he went against the grain and, and trusted himself. Um, if you want to sort of explore uh, the significance of this, I would invite you to look at some of J.K. Rowling's later works where Harry more or less comes into his own, uh, particularly after some of the other things that transpire in the series. Um, Thank you very much, and I will talk to you again next week.